riding the wild west of East Asia on our jungle adventure with Cambodian motorbike tours. On our first day, we left the capital of Phnom Penh and headed south for the coast to overnight in a beach resort and get ready for some beach riding. Sunrise on our second day of riding. Today, we'll be heading from Kep to another coastal town, Sihanoukville. Our posh hotel turns on our first of many buffet breakfasts while our trusty steeds wait for some beach riding. An unusual aspect of Cambodia is there is so much awesome single trail, but of course they are just tracks for pedestrians, cyclists or the occasional scooter. <laughs> and often we are actually riding through people's backyards. Do this in the west and property owners would be shooting at you. But in Cambodia, they love it. Of course, the trick is to not ride like an idiot, respect the locals and make sure you wave hello, especially to the kids. And then a pile of dirt bikes in your backyard turns into some great entertainment for the Cambodian villagers. So uh, Chris Perry, I can see you're overwhelmed with the power of the TTR. It's a little bit too much, maybe we can tame it down a bit for the sand I think. From the beach and into our first bit of jungle. While this is called the Jungle Tour, in reality we are riding all sorts of terrain that connects up various jungles in Cambodia. Plenty of ducking under fallen trees on many of the tracks. And despite this being an unseasonally dry time of the year, there are plenty of slippery corners <laughs> to wake up unsuspecting riders. Most Australians are the descendants of convicts, and of course, we act accordingly. To keep us under control, there is a system of fines for bad behaviour, or riding, that goes into a kitty for cold beer at the end of the day. Needless to say, there was a lot of beer to drink at the end of each day. Each crash, $2.50 into the beer kitty. Each wheelie on a main highway or in a village, is $2.50 into the beer kitty. Chris Perry and I love wheelies, as do all the Cambodians. So whenever we figured we were out of the village and not on a main highway, wheelies were on, or young and old. Now it's time for a love story. Emma Broadbent and Chris Perry have been called Australia's first couple of hard enduro, although they debate that. But there's no doubt they are a class act. Emma took out first place in the woman's class at Australia's national extreme enduro Wildwood Rock and Chris is always in the top 10 in the pro class. The couple that rides together stays together and now they are entering international events like the Sea to Sky and Romaniacs. Thankfully they were in crews most of the time in Cambodia but we'll feature some of their faster riding in our supporter vids. It might 
might be unseasonally dry for what is meant to be the end of the wet season, but there's still plenty of water and mud around. We've got Cambodian peak hour. Is there a best time to ride Cambodia? It probably comes down to personal preference. Apparently the wet season is slightly cooler and the afternoon showers are a good way to cool down too. But there's plenty of mud and water if that's your cup of tea. The conditions for our ride more typical of the dry season, so take your pick. One thing's for sure, everyone seems to have a hoot no matter what time of the year they ride in Cambodia. The Cambodian motorbike tour guys said a common question is how well do you need to ride to do one of these trips? I think it's safe to say you'd want a reasonable amount of dirt riding experience under your belt or you would simply get too exhausted and need the support riders to push your bike through tough sections or ride it for you. But you don't need to be a top rider. And if you want more challenge, there are plenty of tough lines out there on the tracks. Chris and Emma were regularly taking very nasty looking detours and I'd join them occasionally. But if you know the basics of riding in mud, hopping logs, and dealing with everyday obstacles, I reckon you'd be fine on one of these trips. They got all these really prickly vines. One of the guys crashed into them. Chris stops to mess around on this rock and I'm glad he's on a TTR 250. He would probably do something insane on his normal KTM. I'd try to copy him and I'd wind up in hospital for the next six months. And these plants are nasty, now I've got one on this side. Everyone has different techniques for the mud bogs. Some charge through and spear off into the trees or wind up with the bike on top of them. Others, like me, take the slow, cautious approach. No, I like it nice and slow. And Chris tends to charge through, but always in control. How do you feel being shown up by your girlfriend through that mud puddle? Well, I'm getting used to it now. She's um, getting better and better each day, so um, I'm going to have to book in for a few coaching sessions off her and, and see how, how to do this smoothly because I end up putting a foot down, so that's three points, I think, is it, in trials? Yeah. <laughs> there you go, Chris. Damn, maybe Chris isn't always in control. Uh, so what do you call that technique, man? That's the old um, side stand hanger. Aha. Uh -huh. Side stand straight into my foot. Yeah. Nice one, man. They're going down everywhere, man. You've started a chain reaction. I think one of the Cambodian staff riders is issuing a wheelie challenge. Unlike the DR650, I always had trouble with my old WR450 wheelies. I couldn't hold a wheelie on flat ground at a steady speed. So these straight roads are a great chance to finally get it right on the big Yamaha.
bridges come in all shapes and sizes in Cambodia. And this one was a bit hairier than most. Not as narrow as some, but if you did fall off, there was every chance of being trapped underwater, pinned by your bike. Hoping someone liked you enough to jump in and rescue you. The best strategy, don't look down, look ahead and ignore that water. A lot of thought has gone into planning these rides. Just when the muscles are flagging and we are making mistakes, the flowing tracks start again and we can relax. Chatting with the organisers, I found out that they could work more dirt riding into the tour. And they can do customised tours like that for private groups. But your average Gumbies like us need regular breaks with easy flowing tracks or sealed roads to cool off and recuperate for the next round of dirt tracks. Man, this last bit is fun. After my super light two-stroke back home, I'm finally coming to grips with the big Yamaha and having a ball trying to stay on Chris Perry's tail, even though he's just cruising along. As the afternoon wears on, the thought of a cool beer in a swimming pool keeps us going all the way to Sihanoukville, a seaside town named after one of Cambodia's princes. Man, it is hard to describe how good it is to sink a poolside tinny and swap tall stories about the day's riding. Hang around for our third day as we head north towards Koh Kong for more epic Cambodian dirt riding. Yeah.